Welcome back everyone. So in our shop we have a lot of different machines and students always get the questions of you know how do I set up my machine uh, for the welding process that we're using or you know hey can you come and look at my machine just to make sure it's set up right and you can imagine that I get asked this question a lot and so I decided to make these videos to kind of help you understand how to set your machine up. I know they look pretty intimidating at times if you're brand new to them. They, they look like they can be pretty complicated, but once you deal with the machine enough times, it gets easier and easier. But still, wanted to make these videos so that way you can familiarize yourself with how to properly set them up. So this first machine that we're going to be using is one of our older machines. So it's a Miller Synchrowave 350LX, and I'll point that out uh, again later on in the video. And just for the purpose of this video, we're going to be setting this machine up for shielded metal arc welding, or SMAW for short. At first glance at this welding machine, you'll see that there's a lot that we got to deal with up here, here, and then down here. But first things first, let's turn the machine on. The power switch is on the right hand side, kind of in the middle there. Once you flip it on, the machine's gonna do kind of like a pre-check, so let it run its thing. Now I wanna direct your attention to the series of lights that have uh, come on in the upper left hand corner. The very first light is going to let us know what process we're running, and this machine is capable of running two processes, stick or TIG. Right now it's on stick, which is fine because stick is the same thing as SMAW. But let's say you wanted to run TIG. All you have to do is just push that button, watch that light drop from stick to TIG, and then you can set the rest of your machine up from there. But for right now, we wanna make sure that the machine is set to stick. Next up is amperage. And we want our machine set to panel for amperage, so that way it runs off the amperage we set on the panel itself and remote is for a different welding process. Now for output, we have on, trigger hold, and remote. We want to set our machine to continuously on because trigger hold and remote are again for a different welding process. So click that button, make sure that the blue light comes on. And now for start mode, we have off, lift arc, high frequency start, and high frequency continuous. Now lift arc, HF start and HF continuous are for a whole nother welding process. And if I were to try to push this button to cycle through the options, you'll notice that it doesn't let me because the other options are for TIG welding, not for stick. So just a reminder, when you're setting up for SMAW, make sure that the lights are all the way up at the top. Now if we drop just below that where it says balance and dig, you'll see max cleaning and max penetration. This is referring to TIG, so we're not going to be using this. Next is post flow, which is also for a different welding process, not used in stick, leave this alone. And then on the other side, you'll see pulser, background amperage, pulses per second, peak time, a whole bunch of other stuff. We're not dealing with anything over here. We're just going to be focusing on those red numbers and then everything over on the top left. And just really quick, remember process is stick, Amperage is panel, output is on, and start mode is off. Now for what we're running in our course, E7018 and E6010, we're going to be dropping just below this to that middle section, and we're going to take a look at our polarity. We have three options for polarity. Direct current electrode positive, alternating current, and direct current electrode negative. And switching between them is as easy as just rotating this lever handle. Most of what we'll be doing in here is going to require DCEP. Now the machine doesn't have to be off for you to switch polarities, but if you'd like for it to be off, then switch it off and then switch to a different polarity and then switch the machine back on. Now down at the bottom of the machine, we have a lot of different cables and lines hooked up. Just wanted to give you a close-up, but now I'm going to zoom out and run you through what to do. But just know that your ground clamp and your electrode cables will hook into these two spots right here. I'm going to unhook the two uh, major leads, the ground clamp and the electrode holder, because I want to show you a couple symbols.
On this particular machine, this is going to be the symbol for the ground clamp. So you'll know that your ground clamp hooks into this receptacle. And then your electrode holder is going to hook into this other receptacle. They are designated receptacles, so you don't have to worry about switching them for polarity's sake. You can switch your polarity again by rotating the lever handle. So let's keep this simple. Find your electrode holder and then track the cable all the way to the end where it plugs into the machine. Take that end and hook it into the electrode holder receptacle. And the same for the ground clamp. Locate your ground clamp, follow the lead all the way to the end, and then hook it into the machine. Now before you get to welding, revisit that top section of the welding machine. Re-verify your, uh, your settings, make sure that your process, amperage, output, and start mode are all set appropriately. And if that's good to go, all you have to do is set your amperage and you're ready to weld.